evaluating quarterbacks is incredibly, incredibly difficult. Everybody who charts and grades quarterback prospects has their own specific processes they adhere to, which projects how that prospect will perform in the NFL. Without the correct process, evaluators focus on the wrong variables and later suffer the consequences. When I charted and graded Justin Herbert out of Oregon, my own evaluation surprised me. I was so confident in my final evaluation that I made an incredibly bold, an ultimately incredibly wrong prediction that Herbert would be an outright bust in the NFL. As I said in that episode, drafting is an imperfect science. Prospect evaluation involves keeping track of a never-ending list of variables, and it's brutally difficult identifying which of those variables are most important. I was referencing how scouts would slobber over Herbert's incredible raw physical tools, but would be blinded by his lack of actual ability to play the position. But then he took those very tools and ability and went absolutely scorched earth on the NFL and on me. His 31 passing touchdowns smashed the rookie record. He completed 67% of his passes for 4,300 yards and he took home the Offensive Rookie of the Year honors, all while playing behind a terrible offensive line. He was the league's most pressured quarterback, most hurried quarterback, and was the second most hit quarterback, but still had an all-time great season. There were variables and aspects of Herbert's game that I liked when he was at Oregon, but other variables that I thought far outweighed the good. Today I want to take a closer look at why I whiffed so badly, and how Herbert absolutely proved me wrong. Last year's episode detailed his plus-plus arm strength and ability to make elite NFL caliber throws, but criticized his consistency making those throws, along with his issues tempoing the ball, struggling to get to his second read, his robotic movement in the pocket, lacking anticipation, and collapsing under pressure. That last one was probably my evaluation's biggest miss. While Herbert used his athleticism to evade pass rushers late in the down, then attack downfield, he also showed unbelievable ability inside the pocket to stay calm under pressure. Take this example from Week 2 against the Chiefs. It was his first NFL action ever, and he found out he was starting just 10 minutes before game time after the Chargers team doctor reenacted Mortal Kombat with Terod Taylor. On 3rd and 10, in typical Chiefs fashion, they give Herbert an exotic look, starting with what appears to be an all-out cover zero blitz, with no deep safeties and man coverage across the board. They have 8 on the line of scrimmage, and the Chargers have just 7 in protection, if they max protect with the back and tight end. So Herbert has to be ready to throw hot, if the defense brings all 8. But at the snap, the Chiefs roll into an inverted cover 2 zone, which has the usual 5 underneath zone defenders, but the corners are playing the deep halves, instead of the safeties. Herbert gets pressure off the edge almost immediately, and makes a throw that maybe 5 guys in the NFL could make, and in his first start, this is really impressive for a couple of reasons. Typical Cover Zero has the defense playing blitz coverage, meaning they're leveraged inside since they have no help whatsoever with everyone blitzing. If the Chiefs do bring all eight, Herbert's best bet to throw hot is Mike Williams on the speed out, since Rashad Fenton would be inside leveraged, and the post to Keenan Allen that he does end up throwing wouldn't be open for the same reason. Herbert knows when he sees the middle of the field open, Keenan's post rat will break into that space, and he shows insane anticipation, arm strength, and accuracy under pressure to complete the pass. When he sees the mugged up linebacker Ben Neiman drop into coverage, he knows he's not getting the all-out cover zero pressure, but Taco Charlton torches Hunter Henry off the line and comes basically untouched off the edge. When Herbert sees Tyron Matthews start to settle underneath of the sticks, he knows he has the centimeter of space he needs to deliver an absolute rocket directly over his head. He showed at Oregon he has the talent to make these types of throws, but the consistency he displayed repeatedly making these throws multiple times a game is why he dominated his first year. A lot of rookies will break down under pressure with free runners, but despite Herbert constantly playing under fire, like in this game when he was pressured 58% of the time, he still displayed incredible accuracy. 
the Buccaneers are in cover one, man free, with a run blitz from Devin White. So once again, since there's no underneath inside help, the Bucks are primarily playing inside leverage. The Chargers have a classic play-action glance concept, which is designed for Hunter Henry to quickly cut into the open space vacated by the sucked-up linebackers after the fake. But since Jordan Whitehead is inside leveraged, Herbert has to throw an in-breaking route back shoulder with pressure right in his face. And that's not just any kind of pressure, it's Indomitian Sue running completely untouched from just 5 yards away. Herbert has to execute the play fake, but can't just whip the pass in Henry's direction to get it off. He has to use precision accuracy to throw away from Whitehead jumping the route. Another area I gave him a minus grade in my evaluation was his ability or inability to process defenses and coverages. On film, he looked generally uncomfortable, whether it was going through his second and third reads or his function within the overall offensive scheme. I took the fact that Oregon called the most screen passes in the country as a sign they didn't trust him with more responsibility, but I mistook them limiting Herbert throwing downfield and minimizing concepts that required him to process multiple reads as Herbert's flaws, when in reality, that's actually what he's best at. Here's a play that didn't work, but demonstrates his intelligence and ability to play the position, even like a veteran. As he motions Mike Williams in, he points to the safety Justin Simmons. This is a little gamesmanship on Herbert's part. In the run game, receivers almost always block safeties and not corners. So he wants Simmons and the Broncos defense to think this is a run and that Williams is sprinting at Simmons to dig him out, which helps Williams zip by him, but then he gets blown up by the middle of the field safety. The Chargers must have game planned this anticipating the Broncos would play two high safeties with the middle of the field open. Cause the way it is now, Williams runs right at the safety who destroys him. So I don't blame this hospital ball on Herbert. But just look at the tight window accuracy after he set Simmons up. There were plenty of occasions where the Chargers had little schematic issues, which often made Herbert's job much more difficult. And that's not even including the lackluster offensive line. But he never wavered with either of those problems, and when something wasn't working, he displayed an impressive ability to go back to the sidelines, adjust, and overcome after a concept or play didn't work out. In the fourth quarter against the Falcons, it's 3rd and 9, and the game is tied at 17. The Falcons tip off their man coverage with their pre-snap alignment and when the corner motions with Keenan Allen, then drop both safeties deep into a cover 2 man. As we've discussed in the last couple of weeks on this channel, Cover 2 Man uses inside leverage on each receiver. If we look at Darquez Denard here, we can see he's fighting to get inside the receiver and is using the deep safety to create kind of a bracket. In breaking routes do not work well against two man for this reason, so the offense needs to anticipate the coverage and call some sort of outbreaking concept. Since the Chargers call Dagger, which is two in breaking routes, it doesn't give the receivers or Herbert any kind of chance to create a successful play, and he gets sacked, forcing them to punt. But then at the very end of the game, with the score still tied and just 16 seconds left, Herbert's cooked up a plan expecting the Falcons will come back to that very same coverage and crunch time, and they do. They're in man coverage and again rotate the safeties to a two deep man, so Herbert makes sure he has an in-breaking route on the inside and two out-breaking corner routes outside. The moment he sees the deep safety rotate back to his half, he knows exactly what the coverage is and exactly where to go with the ball. And since Isaiah Oliver is in his trail technique from the inside, Herbert knows there's just enough space to fit in the pass, which puts them in field goal range, and then they kick the game winner. This is the exact type of situation I believed Herbert would struggle in, but he proved in crunch time, with pressure bearing down, he could quickly read the coverage and accurately put the ball in a tight window. While he shocked the world and put me on the Mount Rushmore of Herbert will bust guys, there are still aspects of his game that are cause for concern. He showed true poise and composure performing at a high level under pressure and finished as one of the best in the league in multiple categories. But passing while pressured statistics are historically much more volatile year over year than passing from a clean pocket, where Herbert was mostly below average. There were still some moments of inaccuracy, timing, and mechanical issues, but those are things I believe he can improve on, especially with a full offseason. Here's a perfect example of all three of those issues, where the Chargers are running four verticals down the field, with Henry's route given the option to bend inside towards open space. 
Since it's a one high safety cover three, Herbert wants to hold that safety to one side of the field with his eyes, then quickly throw the seam away from him. But as Henry bends inside away from the outside leverage linebacker, Herbert throws it upfield into that linebacker's leverage, which causes Henry to get hurt. When I'm talking about Herbert's mechanics, watch the top of his drop how he takes this tiny little hitch. A bang seam, like he's throwing here, needs to be released the second the QB hits the top of his drop and can't have any sort of extra hitch cause then the throw will be late. This is a timing based throw, and though Herbert has elite arm strength, these extra hitches in the pocket showed up way too often on his film. My last area of concern is best represented by this graph from PFF showing where Herbert targets his receivers compared to the league average. The red is where he throws more often than other QBs, and then the blue is of course less. Herbert threw to his right, behind the line, and underneath at a very high clip compared to his left, which is something I'm sure the new Chargers staff is aware of and will work with him to improve. I mean, if anything, Herbert has shown everybody that his ability to improve is one of his greatest strengths, and that's just one of the areas in my evaluation that I missed on. I'll link last year's episode down below so you can watch it and learn from my mistakes, since it's been really helpful for me in tweaking and improving my process. I've gone back and skewed my grading system more towards QB prospects who flash elite ability, and I've elevated my emphasis on upside and brought down my emphasis on consistency. Evaluating this position is about taking that endless list of variables and honing your focus on those select few that actually matter. I'm not mad that I whipped on Herbert, cause it gave me insight on how to retool my process and adjust it to make it better than it was before. Scouting and evaluating is an ongoing lifelong process. There will be misses, and at the end of the day, the Chargers got their guy. Despite the criticism, Herbert showed that he has rare talent and the qualities of a high caliber franchise quarterback. He's proved the Chargers right and they knew the power and potential he truly possessed. Now that there's a new staff in town, a new offensive line, and a new sense of hope in LA, Justin Herbert welcomes the haters, and he's just getting started.